that's when like Kanye would roll through or Lady Gaga's first show in LA ever was at my party or like Skrillex would, would be there every single, every single night. Check, 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 check. I feel check. good too. After, be yeah. Good. No, I feel good I too. I can do a podcast. Even with <laughs> I think we could do a podcast. <laughs> oh, look, they're bonding. <laughs> well, I just like the, the vibe he's giving. Yeah, you're cross-legged. You're crisscross applesauce in Steve's house. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. Thank you for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button for us. We have Steve Aoki in the house, in his house. In his We're house. in his house. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, welcome. Welcome to Impulsive, yeah, brother. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to your basement. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Is it's close or what? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's cool. fine. It's fine. You, you don't have to wear the headphones. I uh, imagine you do that enough as a... Oh, you know what? Let me, let me try it out. I was like, I was trying to be free for that moment but maybe no it, you can hear my okay yeah. so you can hear me up here you know what i'm gonna take that i'm gonna take that headphones off maybe right. you have to get maybe you have to get kind of like used to them we're so used to them now that yeah yeah do. it's like part of yeah yeah and you're staying on brand if you're doing that every show you gotta every show yeah. your yeah. house is insane thank you crazy crazy we've seen some crazy houses we just went to tony robbins house oh tony, wow a motivational uh strategist yeah. Crazy house, but what, your what, house. Tell, tell me, like, I, I'm, you know, first thing in my mind is what's the most unique thing in this house? Is he up. has a slide that goes from his second floor to his basement, and I think it's like the only way to get there. Yep, it's a slide, and so you have to go down. He had to get a, uh, permits approved. Wow, a like, tube he, slide. Yeah, there's no stairs or there's an ele there's an elevator. Yeah, so technically, I guess you could take that down as well. But no, what what it is is I guess in Florida you can't have basements because it's so wet there yeah, yeah. yeah and they had to build this massive like submarine almost to house what he wanted to put in his basement which is like bowling lanes oh, wow. basketball courts wow. studios first his seminars so he right. could do them digitally what else yeah. i mean yeah you got a ping pong table a pool table a movie theater room yeah a, a kind of a lounge area like this and yeah dude like i, I i've been in your house for five minutes and Mike has jumped uh, three stories off into a pool. Uh, George's girlfriend, Belle, has done twists into your uh, foam pit. Very impressive, by the way. She's a very, very good twisting. She, many yeah. spins, so many spins. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't help but have this burning desire to do uh, mushrooms. Acid, yeah. And acid. Yeah. Uh, especially in that one furry room. Yeah, yeah. That's the perfect room to do it in, for sure. Because <laughs> you, like, you could lay, you could sprawl out on the floor. It's so soft and everything's so colorful already. So you're just like. It's like every every, kind of trip. Are you speaking from experience? I don't, I mean, I don't even need a trip, man. Like I'm already pretty high in life and <laughs> high on everything else. So. Aren't, aren't you sober? Like full sober? Yeah. I mean, sober is the wrong word for me. Cause I, I don't, it's not like I have like a, I'm not like recovering or anything. Uh -huh. I just, I did drink pretty heavily cause of, I, I would just drink whenever I would DJ. And then at a, there was a 2000, that was a big turning point when I just was like, all right, I'm done drinking every show um and then that that just led me just i was like okay i'm pretty good i never actually got into hard drugs oh. um i tried dabbled in weed very little enough to try it enough where it just didn't do what it's supposed to do yeah you know it, it feels exhausting if that 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 life of constantly traveling and, and and smoking and drinking and i feel bad for most djs because a lot of them get through it by partying mm -hmm. but like did you yeah. have a a, a catalyst that made you go cold turkey like did something go horribly wrong yeah my my very <laughs> yes yeah my very close friend he was more of like a kind of like a bigger big brother to me he passed away <sighs> and that 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 really like tore me up so um it, it wasn't like he died of drinking per se it was just for me i just needed a, it was a complete reality check on everything mm. And, uh, and, and like, you know, I, you know, when you're DJing and you're like, I mean, in the beginning, when you're DJing smaller bars and clubs, it's like, it's like you're partying, mm. you know, when you're DJing concerts and bigger shows, you're putting on a show, but when you're in the club world, you're like, you're like kind of one with the crowd. Mm -hmm. So like, if they're like, if they're lit, like you're lit with them, you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's kind of easy to to like drink and party with them. And if, if that's your thing every night, you know, a couple years down the line, you're like, wow, I, I drank like, you know, I got drunk like 200 <laughs> nights a year, a year, you know, yeah. it's just a lot. You know what I mean? Like, 
So um, you don't realize it until it catches up with you. And then at that, at that moment, I was like, well, I'm done. I'm yeah. just going to just stop. I'm just going to use this as like a kind of stopping point. Yeah. And like for me, I feel lucky because I didn't, I was never really addicted to it where I needed to drink. I just was always nervous before I got, before I went for sure to DJ. And it like helped me loosen up where I can just get crazy with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I totally understand. It's yeah. it's liquid courage is what right. it is. And, and by the way, I'm sorry to hear about the loss of a friend. I, I did a horrible lead into that. That was way too lighthearted. No, so, no, no. I mean, no, no, no. It's, I mean, we're just we're just casually That's talking about it. But like, um, you know, his name is DJ Am, and he's of course, yeah. Oh. And he and he's, you know, at that time, he was the pioneer for DJs. He he kind of he was the aspirational goal oh, of what DJs could do with their lives. And because before then, like DJs, would be, we'd make money, but not like that. We were like popular, but we were not celebrities. Mm. He was a celebrity. He was, you know, he was, he was the first one to really make like some sizable amount of money from it. And, um, and he was also just a really kind, generous human being. Mm. So I was lucky just to be able to be in his presence and learn a lot from him. And, uh, and it was just a sad story of him passing away. And, um, you know, I, I mean, since, since that turning point though, like it's clear my, like my shows have changed. Mm. I've transformed as a human, you know, uh, I've, I learned how to like treat myself as an athlete mentally. And when you do that, then you, you start changing the things that are important in your life. Like for me, I care about longevity. Yep. I care about being able to play a lot of shows and you know, performing at the highest caliber. So you have to, you have to stop certain things. You have to like, you know, just like you, like, you know, when you're in training mode, you're like, okay, these are the things that I have to do in the day. These are the priorities I have to make in order for me to excel at that level. But yeah. it's so obvious for me, right? I'm a boxer. It's like, I have to do these things physically to be able to do the thing, right? Um, the event, the fight for you. One of the first things I remember someone telling me about you is how uh, regimented you are with your health. And, um, uh, were you at one point on a vegan diet? Yeah, I was vegan for five years, but that was probably the most unhealthy I've ever been in my life. Oh shit. Yo, Same yo, story yo, vegans, as you. Vegans, I, plug your ears. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I'm all about a vegan lifestyle, but like when I was vegan, I was not healthy. Got I was like, it, I was it. ethically, I was doing it for ethic reasons, ethical reasons. Yeah. Like, you know, cause I didn't want to kill animals yeah. per se, but like I was eating like every carb on the, on the plate, you know, like, and only carbs. Yeah. So but I didn't really understand nutrition at that point. Um, until later in my life, I really dove into that space and then, you know, but, but now, but now you do, right. You have, I see the ice baths. I see the gym. Yeah. Yeah. And when yeah, you're, yeah. when you're traveling as much as you are, uh, even just like walking in your house, I took a picture of the world records that oh, were yeah. <laughs> right there. One of the world records here is the, uh, the most traveled musician in one year is producer slash DJ Steve Aoki, who clocked up two thousand no two hundred and forty one thousand miles, performing a total of one hundred and sixty eight shows around the world in twenty twelve, which means you're on the road for more than half the year, going crazy at parties every night, and you can't have an unhealthy lifestyle. You have to treat your body like a no, temple. no, you can't. I mean, it's not sustainable. You can't. You, you you do it for a period of time, but then not only physically you probably can't keep going, but uh -uh. mentally it's like the, the fastest burnout. I think it's all really up here. Cause I think your body could sustain a lot, you know, but it's like, if you're, if you can't be motivated mm. mentally, how are you going to keep pushing forward? You know? Like, so, um, yeah, it's always about like remembering what, why you're doing what you're doing. Right. It's like the most important thing for me is like, okay, I like, I love playing shows. I love making music. This is, I'm, I'm like so lucky to even do what I do and make the money that I make. Mm. And, and also I get to like travel the world and connect with so many different people. And the best part about it is like, I get to meet people without even having to say a word. Like how cool is that to connect with someone and there's no words exchanged. It's like the music is doing the connection. Mm. And then there is a real emotional connection being made deeper, deeper yeah. than words. Did you have you ever related to someone's words more than you have mu like music has a way with people? It's funny. It is the universal it makes you language. feel right. Yeah, it's wild. It's and, crazy. and it's like some people that song did like it brings them back to a moment where 
something really pivotal happened or impactful happened in their life. And, and like, they're able to express that moment right there. And I get to actually experience that. So that's like one of the most beautiful things that can happen is that when you know there's a real genuine experience with someone where they like went through a hard time in their life or break up or some, some hardship. And I mean, we've all been there. We've all like had been through a downtime and, and a song has just lifted us up where nothing else could do, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just like a, it's a very fortunate experience. It's a sick byproduct of, of this world and this life you've built. But you mentioned it. What, what is the thing that keeps you going? Why did you first start in this, in this music career? Because you also had an interesting uh, childhood and upbringing where, I mean, not to speak for you, but when you have a father who did found Benihana, you know, like a perceived like really, really wealthy guy, I'm sure a lot of people grew up or thought that you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth. But apparently that wasn't the case. And then here you are and you made this a whole other empire for yourself, which had to be awesome. But where did that fire first start? I want to make music. I want to be a DJ. When you even said it, being a DJ was not a thing. Right. That was a, that was a leap. Yeah. That, and that, that came in deeper in this evolution of music for me. Cause in the beginning, when I got into music, when I was a, in high school, I got into a small subset of a culture of, 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 of the scene it was like hardcore and punk music. So it was just a very, like in my high school in Newport beach, there's only like a few kids that, that liked this kind of music. Mm. But at that time, I mean, Newport beach where I grew up is 96% white. So if you're a minority or a person of color or, or just anywhere different, it's, it's like, it's pronounced. And, uh, I had a harder time making friends in the traditional way, making friends like through sports mm. and whatnot. Mm. I've tried every, I tried it all. And I just failed miserably. Like, you know, I was playing, trying to play football and I was like 96 pounds and like, I was like benched the whole time. Um, and what, whatever I try to do to fit in, in, you know, in the world. And, but it's like these kids that like they found their own little world there. They kind of like let me in. And the way you do that is by making each other mixtapes. Sick. And, and like for me, I remember my first mixtape I got, it's kind of like a ticket to get into this culture. And I got this mixtape and I did not hear this music before. It's like really strange to hear someone screaming and like this music playing. You can't really understand what's going on, but when you can decipher the code, cause it's kind of like that when you can find out like the, the secret message mm. that only a few people can understand, then you feel really cool. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I decipher the code. I know what they're saying. And it's like part of this little, little, little world that like you feel so special to be part of. Mm. And someone gave you this like secret, like little <laughs> ticket to get in. What band, what bands was it like? No effects, MXPX, like Pennywise. Yeah, I, I, like, I love those bands. Yeah. Like, cause I was a snowboarder too. So yeah. I grew up with list, listening to all that stuff, right, right. but it was more like Fugazi, minor threat, yeah. Gorilla Biscuits, which is like the first tattoo I got. Wow. Youth of today, uh, you know, like hardcore like that. And, uh, and I learned all the lyrics like immediately. Mm. And then like, I came in like going, okay, I'm educated from this tape. I want to show, I'll prove it to you. And, and how you get your social points, your respect is by contributing. Like you can't, you don't just go, you get your social points by like walking in with like a fresh pair of Nikes. You get your social points by like, Hey, I made a zine guys. Or like, uh, you know, I don't know how to play an instrument, but I, I want to start a band. You guys want to create something. And, and that's how you, you got your cool points. So like, I would just start a band with some friends. We played horrible music in garages <laughs> and in backyard parties and made zines and put on shows. What, what are zines? Mag, like a, a fanzine, like a magazine. Like, you know, we go to the copy center and like you, you like write poetry and like typewriters and, and glue it on a piece of paper and, <laughs> And then like take pictures at, at a show of a band and throw those, ask them like five questions. Hey, what, you know, and then put that in the zine. And it's like, you're, you're creating the culture by spreading the culture, right? Sick. It's like your own little magazine. Yes. That, that you create yourself. Print, printing the t-shirts. I was like silk screening t-shirts. So I learned how to do that, 
you know, I was doing that in my mom's closet, like 15. So, so you that's, found the, that's hot. That is hustling. Yeah. Man. What is it? What is hustling like that today? Look like, like, is it? Well, I don't know. I mean, what I, what, what I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like what I got from him saying that was he learned early about the art of adding value to other people's lives. Mm. Like he said, you're not going to get culture points for wearing the coolest shoes. Somebody might uh, say that's cool for a second, but when you start to build and you're obviously so freaking good at this, when you start to build a community, of right. people, whether it's around music, whether it's around NFTs, yeah, yeah, right, which right. is obviously the biggest part of that game. You learn that at a very young age, you pick that up. It's like about what you contribute. Right. Right. And learning that at a young age of why that's important to these people that I really cared about their respect. Mm. Like I care more about the respect than everyone else. You know, like I wanted to get their like nod of approval and, and build on that. Right. So taking that element and bringing that to college, and then that's when I started putting on shows in college in my living room. And we did like 200 shows in college while I was, you know, doing UCSB. I was putting on these shows and then graduated college. Then I moved to LA and that's where, that's where the DJ Steve Aoki was born. Gotcha. Cause gotcha. I was in bands playing. I was like, by the time I was 21, I was already, I toured the U S like 14 times in my little band playing in front of like 20 people. Oh, shit. oh wow. Yeah. Wait, so what, what instrument? I played guitar in one band. I played and sang in one band. I sang in another band. Sick. I played bass in a band. Sick. Like I was in so many bands, but like the like the biggest show we ever played would be like thirty five people, you know. Damn. And living rooms and rooms like this. You like had we'd no set up idea. right here. Did you have anybody from the past be like, "Dude, you gotta get the band together"? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? like, right when he started, like, Dude, listen, I was thinking about you the other day. <laughs> yeah, I like I used to scream. So like, there's no way I'd do that anymore because I. Cause I ruined my voice cause I didn't know how to sing. Like, like screamo like, music. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Did so, you ever get uh what are those things on your, on your vocal polyps? polyps? Yeah. Yeah. I got vocal cord surgery like six, seven years ago. And during that time you, I couldn't talk for one month. Yeah. Cause they, they like have to like, yeah, they have to slice yeah. it. So they, yeah, you can't talk for two weeks before and two weeks after. Oh my God. So during that time there was major breakthroughs for me. Because I had I had to like spend that time being totally quiet. It was just fucking crazy. You did a it's, vow of silence, an inadvertent for, for a month. Yeah. <laughs> well, that so sucks. sitting here, I've just listened to you tell a few stories, and each time was like at a low point, and you're like, all right, what are we gonna do? Even when we were walking around, and you were like during COVID, blah blah blah, and you just like build on times where you were either standing still or in like a little of a right, rut. Right. Like Newport was hard for you, but then you found a click that kind of moved you into this music industry. So you really make do for what you have, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, like during that time, the, uh, the 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 vocal cord surgery time, that's when I was like, I really want to actually learn how to meditate because I always toyed with it and I was doing it like on the fly. Mm -hmm. I'd listen to like the apps and stuff like that. So I hired a, a TM coach. She came over two hours a day for two weeks, and we would meditate, and she would tr like kind of like train and coach me and guide me. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't, you know, cause like the, the, the real thing is like the two week rule. If you do something every day for two weeks, mm -hmm. you start picking up a, a regiment, like a, it's no longer like a, a tedious task. Yep, yep. And I started doing that during that time. It was like, okay, so the two hours I've been spending with this coach is here. Then I want to get better at sound design. So I like, I brought in some coaches that like, f like work on music with me just specifically on sound design, not making music. And I like, I hired like a, like a coach on language. So I just was like, I got to really do this or else I'm going to go crazy. I can't just play video games and like, yeah, you yeah. know, I, like, I hate wasted time. It's the worst. I'm sure he's the same way. I know you do so much shit, Logan. So, um, <laughs> you know what I don't do fucking meditate. I admire oh, that. I, I admire that, that bro. Dude, yeah. I, I, I've, I've, the sounds very similar kind of played with it here and there. And I've come to the conclusion that it's probably not for me but you got to coach and having someone coach you and like yes. hold your hand is, can be a game changer. It is an absolute game changer. Cause if I didn't have that coach, I would have never meditated at, at the rate I'm doing now, which I feel like has, has created this balance for my crazy ass schedule in life, uh, which has also led me down the path to think differently about like what mindfulness means. So, mm. you know, like I would never probably got into ice, the ice bath regimen, or I would never got into like, breath work daily or we're never gone to certain things that that i think are really valuable to my overall optimal life you, you know you do an ice bath every day 
Well, I did. I did during COVID. Now gotcha. I'm like, it's harder. But um, during COVID, I was like, oh, because you're like, not. He's not here. He's yeah, not yeah. Here. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I try to do like one, at least like now, like at, at the very least, I do like once a week. Breath work every day. This is all during COVID, man. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I kind of lost a lot of that. But, but certainly you have a routine now of, of stuff that keeps you grounded. Or, yeah. Hey, what is it? Anything stand out in particular? Your healthy diet? Uh, yeah. Di- diet, uh, working out, yeah. meditation still. I still do that in the mornings. Just how? how? That's, that's He's my... gotten good at it probably. He's done... you, you need a coach, I think. That's like the best way for me to... to like for someone like me, I need... I need someone to train with. No, me. no, you know like what? I need Lee or I need vocal cord surgery because I, cause I'll be <laughs> nah. Like I'm going, I'm going, and then I'll get the coach second. So I just gotta but you never screaming. know because you, you, I know you push yourself really hard. I mean, because you are at you are you're you know you're a high caliber individual. You're always going to the like highest levels. There's gonna be potentially a breaking point for you, and when that happens, you you know. I might be, I might be at it, dude. Like I'm, I'm kind of struggling right now, to be honest with you. Like I'm at the end of a, a bender. You know, I was a student in LA for Super Bowl week. You hear my voice? Yeah, yeah. No, Tell them what happened me. today at the casino. I won so much money. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, I don't. Even when he's tired, he wins. He's you exhausted. Won. He's like, sorry, all these W's are he's exhausting on my back. Man, what, what's your game? You get crazy, walk. dude. I love roulette. But just yeah. as of today, he loves roulette. When you you were you were usually would sit and play blackjack with me. It's just not. I love watching the little ball. <laughs> Going just circles. spinning around. Yeah, are, you, are you like a numbers <laughs> guy or are you like a color? I'm both, but the short answer is there's no strategy. <laughs> yeah, like, just like, oh, okay, this number, boom. Yeah, and I like it because you can you can apply a backstory to any decision that you make. And in your head, it's like, <laughs> oh, it makes sense. And then if it hits on 12, you're like, I knew it was going to hit on 12. Because in 2012, I graduated high school. Like, shut up, shut up. <laughs> but I've been, dude, I started with 10K. I'm at like 70K right now. Oh Crazy. My God. Yeah, yeah, ran dude. it up. Like, why would I ever do YouTube or Impulsive or anything ever again if I could just get rich at the casino? Wow. What, so what, like, is there like a That's pattern? A is there a pattern you can share like on... <laughs> How he's you, having a very lu- he's having a lucky day today. Yeah. yeah. So like he's numbers hit or the colors hit both. My last win, I I I I hit twelve, I hit even, and I hit red, all in one. All it was, of them. It was, like all a, it was like a 40 k win. Oh my god, it's crazy. You you don't gamble? Yeah, I live here. I was gonna say I, so I live here. It's too you, dangerous. You, for you yeah, can't, right? Yeah. I uh, so I I actually thought I had a system down, <laughs> and I and I have this app on my phone that that like tracks all my my like my profits and losses it's just like i if i treat it like a business i think it in my head if i treat it like a business and i know <laughs> how much i make or lose every time i leave the table yeah, yeah. i'll have like a, a good judgment right <laughs> so i actually for a few years i had this whole system down and i was up i was up a lot like i never actually lost i either was up or i was even and and the way i would do it is like i play blackjack that's my game. Yep. But my when I play blackjack, I, I tend to lose four or five and then win one. It's that bad. It's like it's like you lose four or five or you win one or two. And you lose four or five, you win one or yeah. two. That's four, like the four or five hands in a row and then row. one or two. So, so all that matters is that the one or two that you're winning yes, are the big ones. Yes. Got it. So the way I go, I'm like, I already like I know it's gonna lose. So I'm like, I put the, the like my small initial bet Table down. Man. Right. Just knowing it's gonna lose. Like I'm like hoping it's going to lose. Like, okay, these four are going to lose. Yeah. Good. All right. The fifth one, I'm going to stack. And it, then this stack. This is an interesting strategy. And then come back to the one. I've you know? never. It makes sense to me. I, I generally. Well, how, would you, how do you know? It's, it's, it's a total guess. It's a guess on pattern. Like, I, I, like in my head, I'm like, I got this down because I was winning two years straight. And, um, and it's obviously you go up and down. And sometimes you're obviously not right every time. But I thought that like I had the, I had the casino down. And then, and then <laughs> I wonder how many people have said that before. So, yeah, yeah. I did. I, like, I thought I got it done. So you're and taking then, my home. Ne- yeah. The next, the next year, um, I went, I applied the same thing. I was like, all right, January, new year, new time. I'm ready to go. I'm up. And, uh, I, like I tried the strategy, but I kept losing on my, my big, big presses. Uh. And then I would like, you know, get my marker. I'm like, okay, I got to double because I got to make back the first because I never want to go leave the table negative. Yeah, that's the thing. And then I lost the second marker yeah, yeah. and I got to double the second and first marker. Oh, and then I'm like, I got to get back to even. And then I'm just like in this hole and I'm like, 
okay, first start of the year. I'm just so down. That's Mikey. Well, how big are these markers, Steve? Like I do ten thousand dollar markers. Okay, so you get you have like a bad. You might have a bad fifteen hundred k night. Yeah, like the first the first one was a fifty k uh, loss. Yeah. Because I, I'm I'm happy if I make like two to ten grand. Like I would do a ten thousand dollar marker if I'm up like two or five. I don't need to sit at the table for like hours. I can be there for like twenty minutes. See, that's my problem. That I can't leave. Even if I get a good stack going, I just like to play. I like to play the game. Like that's yeah. why I'm there doing it because I I thoroughly enjoy playing. Maybe it's because you're with friends. No, oh, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, we make fun of him a lot. We no, make sure he knows we don't love him. He's by himself. Yeah. His arms are crossed at the table, <laughs> and he just taps his knee. <laughs> I, dude, I'm up 60k. I have played a total of 15 minutes of roulette. Oh, okay, you're, you're smart. Just in you, and out. Yeah, exactly. That is the way to do it. That's yeah, it how really you do it. is. You get in, you get up. Three you different, get out. three different sessions. Each one's only five minutes. Exactly. Couple numbers. Once you go up, up, go up. Like if you think in your head, because I think the human brain. We like always want to do more in our yeah, lives yeah. in general, right? So the gambling is the same thing. It's like, okay, we got here. Now we can get here. You know, like it's always like that. That's why the casino has, has us on just the psychology of, of how we think, right? So, so you don't gamble that much anymore. I don't gamble at all. I don't really. Do you, that's yeah. not entirely true, Mr. NFT. Uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay. All right. In that's the casino, <laughs> I don't really gamble. I play poker. I definitely like we'll get into NFTs your for sure. Your poker but. story is pretty cool. With, I read it in Dan's book. Oh, okay. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how I met Dan. That was a, that was, when I was reading his book. I, so I had him, we had him on the podcast yeah. and his, his views were like super different than mine. Like I was like, wow, we're not even looking at life the same way. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so we got in like this little debate and then we started talking on DMs and I was like, fuck it. I'm gonna read his book. So he sent it to me and bro, I read the whole book from cover to cover. It was such an amazing book, but your, your parts in it was like, Fuck it. I want to see that in movies and right. I, I know like he's gonna kill me because I didn't read it and he's like literally one of my best friends. <laughs> I got. I, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it Wait, after, especially after you, you I, talked about I'm it. I'm blanking. How how did y'all meet in the book? Um, uh, we poker friends. Oh, I oh, use. Oh. I was a D Gen poker player. Oh, actually, in the 2000s, yeah. Like I would play every time I would I would DJ after I DJ at 2 a.m. Oh wow. Like finish. I would be like be at Commerce Casino. I would be in some <laughs> private poker room. I would be somewhere, yeah. and then when I played in Vegas, I'd find myself in a poker room, and you know, DJs find DJs, and he was a DJ too. Damn. So like, <laughs> DJ, I'm using that for now. <laughs> I'm just talking to my girlfriend like that. Let's go, DJ. <laughs> <are you laughs> <out of here? laughs> Podcasters, bro. How do you think we found each other? <laughs> a bunch of DJs. It's it's all DJs. hanging out. We're all DJs. Talking shit. Dude, I, mean, I kept hearing DJ from Pierre. I was like, he's a DJ. I was like, when did Dan start DJ? <laughs> we're just a, we're just a bunch of people. Like, <laughs> just nipples. He's just, uh, you know what? If Bill Zarian <laughs> started DJing, that would be <laughs> that would be pretty epic. But but you know what Bill Zarian would be DJing? What? All country music. Yeah, he was, yeah. <laughs> like literally all. I learned about country through him. Every no time way. I'm with him, he's just fucking blasting country. Like you think country's? You think country might be next up? I think it is. I've because, been saying that because we've seen so. And you tell me your thoughts on this because, at maybe, what five ten years ago, house music was the biggest thing in the world. Biggest thing in the world. It was the only thing anyone cared about. Now, once again, it's hip hop, yeah. and hip hop and rap music leads the culture completely. Who knows how long that lasts for, right? But what's next? Country is regional, though. Yeah. Country is very American. Mm. It's it's hard to translate that to, you know, Global. Finland or to Australia <laughs> or like, to like China. Like, it's just harder. I think the, the thing is with electronic music is it like, just like you said, you guys were saying this, there is no language. Yeah. It's like a, it's the, it's like the. It's like a tempo, like a feeling, feeling. rhythm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a, yeah. it's a melody. C it's country's like, more lyrics. You're right. 100%. Yeah. It's like, and it's also very cultural when yeah. I listen to country, like, so whenever I listen to something, I don't understand, you know, when I was younger, the first thing I'd be like, I don't like it. I don't understand. I don't like it. That's like the first thing I think all kids say, hundred percent. but like now I'm like, I'm a producer. I want to hear different shit. Mm -hmm. So I look at country the same way. I'm sitting in the, in the boat with Dan and all his friends are singing along to country. <laughs> And there's, you know, like, okay, I hear about tractors. I hear about like drinking <laughs> and like, and like, like broken hearts and like, like, denim. you know, so much yeah. Denim. And like, yeah. Cowboy boots and Pick denim. And I'm like, wow, it's so cultural and it's so important. <laughs> like to talk about like, Dirt roads. like, like farming and like, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, whatever it is, it's like, it's, it's just like, chores. It's a bunch of chores. <laughs> chores. <laughs> <laughs> chores. They're just like, we're going to sing about what we're going to do this week. Clearing brush. <laughs> but like, yo, I got, I, I was sort of thinking about it too. Yeah. I was thinking about like, I forgot what I was thinking about. I was like, 
about like riding a tractor. I was like, yo, would you this, do it with an accent? <laughs> I think I was. I mean, you never know. I like, like, it. like, like yeah, everyone else doing it, you know. But thanks, my tractor, sexy. <laughs> is an actual song. Country music for me, because I grew up in Ohio, and a large portion of Ohio loves country music, and I do too. I have my bands that I really like, but they do an amazing uh, country artists do an amazing job of like really appreciating the simple things in life right. like the right. things that really matter and they they put it a nice it's melody cozy. behind it's it in the heart. it's cozy bro it's like i don't know it's they 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 appreciate a lot of shit that maybe the east and west coast folks don't like right. californians you know i don't know if they're super pumped to sit around a fire uh, and drive a pickup truck down a dirt road and pop a beer with your friends. Maybe it's their views. They're very Maybe. slow. And it's, and it's really accessible. Like it's like anybody in that area, rural America, whatever you want to call it, they can access those emotions because they have a pickup truck. They yeah, have, yeah, a, exactly. a, they have yeah. grass. They can cut. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they have all of those. <laughs> Don't you love it when <laughs> lyrics really tend to you? <laughs> yeah. Go, go cut the grass. Yes, dad. <laughs> So, no, but uh, Luke Holmes is the only artist that I did. I even say his name right? Yeah. yeah, I fuck, dude. I I play his shit and I'm like locked in. But it's hard to move from country to something else. It's hard to go from like family, like way of living, and then it's like bad bitches getting. Yeah, yeah. It's like your brain. Goes, that's, like, fuck it. that's actually you know good. I mean? That's actually a great transition for what I was gonna ask. So, how do you go from like E Town Concrete to EDM? Like, how did you make that swap from? screamo over to to dance like what would, what would, what did that look like the surgery or an electronic before we get there yeah i i do i can announce this here i am doing a country collaboration oh with yeah. oliver tree <laughs> i love oliver tree. I, yes I, so do we, we love that guy love we, we love tree. oliver who are you doing a collab with they both brown no way oh, yes. we love Dude, him we love it we He's love a friend of ours and it's got a fucking craziest harmonica solo Sick and, and and the drop is fire. Wow. Like sick. I could imagine some crazy like country sort of swinging dance to this shit. Cool, like, dude. Kane, it, Kane is crushing Kane, right now. Dude. Yeah, Kane. Yeah, he's been a, a good friend. We'll always drop in the zone. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, he loves Warzone. But, um, we play. We play with him. pretty good too. But uh, yeah, it's a good. So I just want to announce that here because I haven't announced that. To we love it. Else. We got alpha. Uh, we, we got some. We got alpha. the alpha. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So when I was in like bands, that was a different time of my life. It's like, I feel like my era, like there's so many eras to my musical history. So I was in bands up until college, and when I moved to LA, I had to I had to like mentally make the transition of trying to actually make money. So that's when I pivoted away from being in a band and supporting bands. And I really focus on a record label, and and in order to do the record label and build culture in LA, I threw parties. So we threw Dimac parties where bands would DJ, and I would open, and I was literally opening the small bar and clubs, you know, like learning how to DJ on the spot, like literally, like I would go there two hours before and like drop, like you know, play some of the vinyl I have back here and learn how to beat match and curate songs and. You know, and then as like people are trickling, they can hear me like struggling while I was DJing, you know, but I was really the party promoter. I was yeah. like throwing the parties. Yeah. Dude, you have no problem taking the leap. Just like, just like hearing this now, probably part of the reason you're so successful is, uh, it doesn't really sound like you're afraid to fail. Yeah. I was failing, but the thing is I was failing in the public, like constantly. <laughs> like I was just, I was like, you know, I don't think I was a very good singer. I don't think I was a very good musician and I was playing in front of all these people and it definitely wasn't a good DJ. Especially in the beginning. I mean, now like maybe I'm all right. <laughs> but do it long enough, I just better be fucking decent. But in the beginning, I was total garbage. But I, um, but it was it wasn't about me. That's the most important thing. It's about like the the place. So as long as I brought in like a band that everyone wanted to see DJ mm, mm, mm. and do it consistently, and then it grew into a culture. It real. That's what's so great about LA is that LA is a hub of music. Mm. So as we're building our little scene in these little rooms, like holding in the beginning, like 50 people, we upgraded to a club space that held like 400. That's when like Kanye would roll through or Lady Gaga's first show in LA ever was at my party or like Skrillex would, would be there every single, every single night or like the, the rise of LMFAO during the early 2000s and like Black Eyed Peas when they were reigning supreme. Like I was lucky to even do a song with Will I Am. Actually, that's an interesting story because my very first single was with Will I Am, 
and he was always coming to my party and my like my party was the hottest thing for our little cu- cultural little subset world yeah. like we are like underground culture and there's like the brent bull house like you know all the celebrities go to those parties in la but the dim mac parties were like we're like the, this undercurrent of music. Kid Cudi was, was, was always performing MIAs for a show, like those kinds of artists. And, um, Will I am was always there because you had to be at these parties because you couldn't like, there's no social media. So you had to be at the club to hear what the fuck's going on uh. in the undercurrent. Right. And Will is always there. Will I am's always there. So I was like, Hey, Will, can we do a, a record together? And, uh, he, he had no idea. I'd never done a record with anyone. <laughs> but he just knew I was the guy throwing like the fucking sickest parties, yeah. bringing all this this talent in. And I went in the studio with them, and I played him this beat that it was like, it was you know, I mean, it's pretty good actually, um, but it was like you know, pretty rudimentary. And he fucking loved it, and he was like singing, "I'm in the house," like in in the in the control room on his BlackBerry. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And like, and I, I got a mic out. I'm like trying to record him on the spot because I'm like, if he knows this is not my very, if he knows this is my first song, he's, out. he's, not, he's definitely not going to do a record with me. So somehow I was able to finesse that, like this record to come out and, and it like did its thing. And, and then I told him later, I was like, yo, I just want you to know that was my first record ever done. <laughs> no, he's like, no, after. <laughs> and he's been my friend since. And every, every year, if I'm doing an album, he's like always supporting and he's Sick. always like, you know, doing a record with me. Did that, but. did that party also birth the beginning of, uh, you and Cody's relationship? Because obviously uh, pursuit of happiness was one of the yes, craziest, yeah. you know, things ever. Is that, would you say that's your biggest, that's my biggest remix for sure. Remix, one of my biggest, yeah, work. definitely one of my biggest tracks right. that I produced yep. that the world knows for sure. It's like my closing song to this day. Yeah. It's kind of like the goal for any producer to make a record that's timeless, you know? 2022 i made the thing in 2009 and it's still like damn it still bangs and people fucking go goes crazy. no go absolutely crazy yeah. yeah but we did a we did a tour together across the u.s it was a dim mac fool's yeah. gold tour a track another dj has his label he signed kid cuddy day and night and he's he brought him out on this tour as is like the new artist yep. and it was cuddy's first tour so we toured across the u.s together and we became really close friends on that tour and um and then he's like, "Hey, my next single is uh, it's called Pursuit of Happiness with uh, with Ratatat and Ratatat. MGMT." That's right. And, and he's like, "Will you remix it?" And we were already like really close. And um, I was like, "Of course, you know, I like pretty much did it for free. It was like very little money. I just would, I just did it." And then, um, and then you know, whenever you come to LA, he was always at my parties. He was, I remember one party, um, we we dropped the the remix. It just came out, and he was singing. Literally, the room is so small. I swear to God, it's like. It's like this room might be bigger. It was, it's that small. Damn. So we have a DJ booth on the floor and there's a bunch of people here. So maybe like 60 people. And we, I dropped the remix for the first time. And he's like in his, like when he gets in this like zone, he's such an artist. He's like so magical. He doesn't care about anything. And uh, I dropped the remix and he's like singing on the, on the track. And he just starts giving away his jewelry. <laughs> like right there. He's just like, he's just like in this like, Santa Claus spirit love like you know he's in this moment he just wants to like share the this feeling and he's just like handing his jewelry out to like people in the crowd that like and the crowd is like me to you you know <laughs> so he's just like giving it to like me giving it to you Logan like you're right here it's just only like a little pane of glass that's like separating yeah. us you know and and people were just getting like whatever he's giving it was like Damn. I'm like like look oh my god what Damn, the fuck's bro. going on he's, you know, it's just, it's actually like, it, it inspired me so much that it's not about like, it's about like following the feeling, you know, he followed like this, this magical feeling of us dropping this thing for the first time. We worked on this thing together. <laughs> yeah. I'd made like literally 60 versions of Pursuit of Happiness. Did you like know, did you know it was as good as it ended up being? Cause obviously playing any unreleased track live for the first time is probably horrifying, but did you get, did, was there a reaction in that room when you played it that time? Or even from Cuddy, obviously you made him give away his things, which was <laughs> notable, but, but did you, did you know that the song was going to, you know, get over half a billion streams plus? No, absolutely not. Actually it, it, it was really great to do a, a record with him at that time because he was on the come up, but it, it didn't really blow up. It didn't blow up until after project, project X. X yeah. And that was oh, like wow. three years after. Yeah. Oh, so wow. it like was cool, 
it was definitely cool. Like, you know, I definitely played it out and I was like, Oh man, this is, this is the moment. Bah, 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 yeah. You know, like, like you can't, it's undeniable when you hear that, you just were like, you have to stop. You have to stop every conversation. Yeah. You have to yeah. like get into it. So like it did its job there. So it's an effective moment for the live, but I have effective, effective records that are live that don't, don't go crazy. Become, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't become popularized. I have a lot of those. So interesting. that one, for some reason, like after project X came out, it gave it like this new lease of life. It like gave it a new set of legs. It gave it a visual. It gave yes. it a visual. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, you, yeah. you exactly. were able to attach like, this is what you're supposed feeling. to be doing when this yeah, song exactly, is playing. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, it really was oh, like man. the pinnacle of that. Like this is the ultimate party. And then they dropped it. Yeah. It was like a music video inside yes. of the, the movie, you know? So yeah, that was a big moment for that. When you when you look back to those parties, you look back to Cuddy and Lady Gaga and all that stuff and being in that in that, you know, super cultural like scene that you had curated, the entire environment, the entire experience. How does that compare to being at fucking Tomorrowland or like, you know, or at like uh Ultra and playing for hunt like which one how do those compare and which one do you hold more dearly to your heart? I mean, they're both so different yeah. and they, they're both totally meaningful. You know, like those parties at that early stage, there's the, the intimacy is like undeniable, you know, like when Lady Gaga performed, she, she performed on like a table with drinks. There's no stage. Like who gets to see that? She's like yeah. crowd surfing and yeah. like, you know, she's not worried about like, you know, like she's like still an upcoming star, you know, it's like though, like those kinds of moments you'll, you just can't experience ever again. I had, I remember even like backtracking when I was putting on shows in, um, Santa Barbara, when I was in co uh, college, I had Jimmy at world who was like, you know, everyone knows who Jimmy at world is. They were playing in my kitchen. <laughs> they played in my kitchen in front of like 12 people, maybe 12 people, you know, they, they came and they slept on the couch. Cause that's just what bands do. So it's just like to be part of those moments when you see something happening and you're part of that experience. It's so special. Uh, it's just a complete different feeling than, you know, than, than obviously, but playing Tomorrowland is like, that's like the goal. It's like, you know, end game. It's like, yeah, it's end game. It's like, but also you have to perform exceptional. You have to, you have to break through because you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of DJs there. Well, you well you do a great job of that. I mean, you have of the many things, uh, the the raft, right? <laughs> the, you throw a raft into the crowd, and that's a, I, I think I saw Dan Bozarian doing the raft for the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. the crowd, the cake. The cake. Can we talk about this for a sec? Because yeah. I was I was going there too with the Cuddy giving out the jewelry, and somehow you transitioned that into throwing cakes yeah. at fans. And it, we watched video a video compilation of it on the way over here in the car. And uh, it, it, it looked like it started, I want to hear about how it started, but it seemed like it started with you kind of lobbing them. And when I see you do it now, you are fucking you launching fuck up, dude. cheat cakes at people. Yeah, you a sniper. Dude, dude, the distance you're covering on some of these throws, you're it's accurate a, yeah. and you're left-handed. Do you practice yeah, yeah. this? Yeah, yeah how did yeah. it start? Oh, I, have a, I have a cake throwing target practice room. <laughs> Did and I, I show not it to say you. that. On the way here, I go, there's no way. He's too good. He's getting this on first tries. I could just picture you at home and be like, where's the cakes? They're bacon, sir. She threw all the other ones. They're like reloading. <laughs> no, no, I don't have one. But I mean, I should. But um, wow. yeah, I mean, I've caked. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I started in 2011 and I've never broke below 200 shows. And I like, I've broken over 300 shows, I think, for three years. So, and I was doing 10 cakes a show. So you could do the numbers. Like I definitely caked over 20, How you even 000. have time to perform? That's so much cake. Did you ever pull? So, no, well, I, well, it's only one song. So I made a song like 2013. I made a song called Cake Face. Okay. Because before I would just like cake during Pursuit of Happiness or something. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and then when I, when I made this song, that's when I was like, okay, 10 cakes a show. And during that song, I made it really long. It's like four minutes or something. Okay. Okay. So like, you, you know, could, you could just go for it. Yeah, so then that's when I'm caking. Yeah. So I can't cake during the whole show. I also cake at the very, very end. So I save it like just like when you eat cake, you eat cake for dessert. Yep. You you have cake <laughs> and for the very end of my show yeah. because it gets everywhere. everywhere. 
you know, and I want, I don't want it like tracking all over the place. I just want it to be the very finale, big finale of the show. You ever seen the, uh, the cake in real life? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was in a, I was in a Biza once. With, yeah. With, yeah. With Logan. Steve. Yeah. I think Logan, you launched a cake. Oh yeah. We were fucking people up. <laughs> Steve Aoki goes, you want to kick someone? I'm like, I'm going to kill someone. With the <laughs> like, yeah, I've seen you do it, dude. Dude, by the way, you know that show in Ibiza? Uh, I had fully pulled my hamstring. That's why my leg was purple. taped up. It, my whole leg was purple on the backside. Like you, oh, yeah. I think you you were like, talking about like, that. Well, I remember that. Because I, I, yeah. I, was, I was in so much pain, but... Man, that universal music language thing we spoke about. I don't know what it was, but I forgot I was hurt. Yeah, because you were stage diving. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I, I turned back, or you're behind me at one point, then all of a sudden I turn around and you're just flying in the Why, air, dude. <laughs> and like, like, and then, like four times. Jake, too. Both of us. Yeah, just, you guys are both like the, the Paul brothers are just like out in the crowd. <laughs> just imagine, bro, that people that don't really know you or hear this podcast get to know who you are just seeing you do some shit. Yeah, flying. Like, literally. You did like a, like a, I don't even know. I don't even know how you got that height. Because, it's like you're on. With two broken acids. I, no, I have no idea. It must have been the. Well, anyway. <laughs> no, nah, and it wasn't that night. Well, it was any night. I've never done any type of drug. I saw you do it at Shrine, I think, in on yeah. the East Coast. And oh, I'm from yeah, I'm yeah. from the East Coast, and a marquee obviously is a place yeah, that yeah. You're, at, you're at all the time. But it, it's it's how, what kind of cake? What's the optimal cake? Okay, for so you to throw. We actually. Can I snitch? <laughs> this is this is actually really important. You know, like in the beginning, I was I was actually getting the cakes at the uh, um, the supermarket in the very beginning, because it was just so. And I was I was also traveling alone. You know. So it was different. I had to do everything myself. But now, I, love, I love this question. I want to say, and I love the detail that you're, yeah. you're like, yeah. Just, and you're excited. About that. He's excited about it. No, okay. It. So we have a cake writer. So every artist has like the technical writer. writer. Yeah. Uh -uh. Okay. This is the DJ set that we want. These are speakers that we want. Uh, this is how the stage should look like. And then you have like the food writer. Yep. Like this is the stuff we want in the back with this alcohol or these drinks. And then, but for Steve Aoki, I got my own cake writer and it's six pages long and the promoter it's promoter's responsibility to make sure they adhere to the writer because, um, I'm launching these cakes as you know, into people's faces. So, um, no pun intended. The cake doesn't have much cake. Uh, it's like, just like frosting and like just colors and just gets right. everywhere. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. explosive on impact. Like these are special cakes. Is, is that in the rider? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like explosive the how to make on impact. must be explosive cake or will not do show. Do you have any one story from uh, caking that that like stands out to you the most? Like, is there one cake throw? Did you fall off the stage? Like, is there anything you really remember? Was somebody allergic to cake and they're like, oh, man. <laughs> they just started melting. <laughs> um, I think. One one time, this is that shrine in L.A. Um, I'm just trying to think of like times I got caked. Oh yeah, because that happened. So like one time, like like Vin Diesel came out, and it was a big deal because you know it's Vin Diesel. He never like he just barely makes a public appearance. I, I, I've never seen him out. Yeah, I, right, I right. So somehow I got him out. Like I I got him out. He came to the show. I was like so surprised he came, and I'm like, hey Vin, you want to cake someone? You know like. So then I brought, I gave him the cake and I, I thought he was going to cake the crowd. And he just turns around and just cakes, cakes me real, <laughs> like all Damn. over. So that was kind of like a moment I won't forget for you sure. You got caked by Vin Diesel. Yeah, I yeah, remember, yeah. I remember yeah, that, that was, too. That's pretty epic. I got the photos to document that. And his face is like, ah. <laughs> like full on like. like they used that like scene in, in the new Fast 10. Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, should, we, should, we should get into the topic at hand. You said that today's a big day for you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Tell us why. Okay, so. The Aoki verse launched. Sick. So, what is Aoki verse? It's, um, it's my NFT community membership. Sick. Sick. And I think a lot of people might look at like a like a fan club kind of situation because you have all these perks of like getting to come to my shows, and you understand how that works. Like yep. the access that that people can have to yep. you, yep. you've opened that the door up, right? But it's far greater than that. It's 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 access to all my network, you know, in, in the NFT, in the metaverse mm. space and in, in the IRL. Mm. So, um, you know, from NFT allow lists and free mints, mm. um, to, uh, you know, we're dropping a free clone X 
you know, to Sick. the, to the membership. Whoa. We're actually dropping a few of them. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's a variety of things. Like it just uh, opens the, it up. The utility of the NFT, I think, is one of the coolest things about it. And as a fellow creator and a person who also has a thing coming up soon, it's really cool to see you kind of is expanding what NFT is understood to be right now. You know, everyone thinks they're these fucking like little images, yeah, yeah, the JPEGs, cartoons yeah, or whatever, yeah. which is true. Yeah. But it's a sliver of what they're capable of. Yeah. And, and and even just walking around your house, one of the things that you probably saw me get most excited about was um, your DJ booth with the green screen behind you for your live shows that you can yeah, essentially yeah. be performing wherever yes. in the world in whatever yeah. metaverse. Like right. I, I, I would love on a Friday night, um, especially, man, say like, God forbid, another pandemic, some sort of global disaster. Right, happens, right, right. And you just throw on your <laughs> VR headset and I get to watch Steve Aoki with my friends who are in the metaverse and their avatars that are next to me and we're just playing. And so the Aokiverse launched, you announced it today? We, yeah, so the public sale just happened. Okay. We, we, uh, we did like a few days ago, we had um, allow list for NFT holders of, of various communities that yep. supported us like yep. doodles and uh oni force jank squad out of cool. squad a bunch of different communities and now it's public and and what we're launching is once you get in you buy these credits that act that that will burn into a passport mm. and the passport is what's exciting so it's like a new dev that grows with you because you can open up the passport and you have like stamps of like oh i was at 15 Aoki shows and those are all stamped in the passport and they can micro level up in into your tiers and there's different levels of, of, of what you can get in your membership. How do you track who's at your shows? Do you show a QR code at one point on your show and you can scan it and it like is it's you can, um, we're going to token gate some of these shows. Okay. Sick. So so like that way you go through once you're in there then you get your you know it's like the way I look at it is like I collected all my ticket stubs of all my favorite shows yep. I went to when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Flyers. Yep. It's like now it's like you can have them on chain. And now Sick. it's like, you know, like all these shows that I'm talking about, they're legendary. Like when Lady Gaga performed, how cool it'd be to have that. Like I was there yep. and it's on chain. It's forever here. And I was there. Like this yep. is my, you know, participation. It's so not only that, but like being able to document all that, have it on chain and have it as like, you know, you can level up yep. to these higher levels where you get, different perks different rewards different access free mints yeah whatnot what, what was the size of the mint uh so we did twenty five thousand credits okay um and there's uh and then you like you know obviously there's like uh we we level them up by four so first level is one one credit then it's the second level is four credits the the third level is 16 the the next level is 64 and it goes up cool and you have obviously like the the top tier is like you got to come to my house. We're going to make a record and we, we can actually make a record together and put it out to the world. Oh, you know why, you know why it works is cause you're, you're an investor collector and NFT strategist yourself. Like you care, you know, you're in the space, you're collecting. I seen a picture of your doodle when I walked in. Yeah. Um, and a mutinate. And, and, yeah. And a mutinate. And, and I seen a thing you, you said recently is that you've made more money off NFTs than you have in your past six albums. Yes. Which is fascinating. Yeah. It's uh, and it's true. So like in that, that we haven't even touched, touched about, um, uh, touched, uh, NFT music, like music in NFTs yeah. and like what that will mean for artists and also fans having, having actual conversation, communication with, with artists, you know, having an influence, potential influence on mm. the music or mm. whatever offering that the artists can do. Um, it's going to be a game changer and it's going to upend the whole system of how things work right now um it's not going to take away spotify it's not going to take away record labels and management it's not going to take away these things because they're all big parts of this piece but just like how anything has changed if you don't you can't stop what's going to happen so you might as well like move with it mm -hmm. right it's inevitable yeah yeah so you, you can't be a label going, i'm just going to hoard everything and control everything uh -huh. you're gonna have to be like I, I have to join them and help amplify the relationships that artists have with their fans mm -hmm. back to community. I mean, exactly. He, he, he said it yeah. here. Democratization. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, 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 and that's all it is. And NFTs thrive in that, in that way. And I think when more musicians catch on that, this is the inevitable future and your fans can participate and live and breathe this art with you. Even like, go, make, I'll go as far as to money. say, yeah, bro, like share royalties, royalty yeah, shares sure. on, 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 for sure. on songs for some artists would be crazy. Yeah. Like, 
Right. It's such a cool way to 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 be able to pivot, Fun, adapt, and get funding, all that stuff. It makes me happy, man. I, I get so, I get so happy when people ask me, uh, artists ask me questions about NFTs, and they're curious. And even, even if they don't take that step right away, um, and I, I I often am meeting with people and just planting seeds in their head, right? Because I want to see this space evolve, and we're so close. I I feel like what we're doing with this membership is something that hopefully other artists can take and use as inspiration because the dev is there and yeah. like you know as we're growing i mean like luckily we work with to me the best dev dev out there manifold they're they did the pox pages yeah, to poets of course, they, of course. They mad dog jones they did like they've done so much you know out of the box dev in nfts and this is definitely something very unique because it adds so much more than just a membership there's so much token gating into live shows into uh, other nft projects connecting the interoperable, you know, communities all together. And so much like, there's so many cool things that we're going to do exclusively, you know, whether it's like merchandise with different, different NFT projects. When I saw your studio, which I, was my personal favorite room in the house thus far that I've seen, uh, I, I mentioned to you, I was like, you should build this in the metaverse and, and have this be like a room or a hub, you know, and you, you mentioned something about sandbox. Do you plan on uh, integrating and build, doing an exact replica build out of like some of these real life rooms in your house in Web3? This whole house is uh. already <laughs> like, yeah, we've, we've been working on with sandbox since, uh, you know, for like probably four or five months. Sick. Actually longer, maybe six months Dude. On, on developing this house. It's, I already saw like a rendition this morning and it looks, it's like. This house on acid, steroids, oh. uh, it's just, it's, it's like, it's this house magnified of what you could do in, in, in a sandbox world. So, so sick. all of the above, you know, how, and, much, and, how yeah. much land do you have there? I got, I, I got, ton, a, right? I got a ton of land. A Where, ton of land. Is yeah. it all how much, how much you got? How much, how much land do we have? What? Just, just say it all out. What? Oh, Six, you got a four by four. Four by four. Holy yeah. Oh no. That's right. And where is it? Yeah. Is it, it where's it by? Oh, no, so see, I thought you said, I thought you said like 30, 24 by 24. That's that's a massive. That's a it's, it's a lot of land, and, and just one of those is Aoki's Playhouse. Got it. Mm -hmm. So we're developing all these other areas of, uh, inside Sandbox, and it's right next to Snoop's. So we oh, have like yeah. Snoop's massive spot, and you have like then the Aoki's cool world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, are you in, you're doing something there. I think we're gonna do something with Sandbox. We we are well. I don't know if we can say it. Yeah, yeah we're, we're like finishing up a deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Um, ironically, they bought, they were the people that bought my my world of women. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, well. <laughs> it's yeah, the for, night goddess, right? Yeah, the night goddess for, for $735,000. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That's huge. Cra man. Bro, crazy. Yeah. But I met the guy who like actually made the purchase yeah. at um, the, the Bieber thing. At this last, oh, yeah, 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 we yeah, met, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah I met yeah. him in uh, Super Bowl weekend. Yeah, yeah. okay, all right. He was cool. just cool. chilling, hanging yeah. out. I was hammered. I was, I climbed over a rail Fence. to say what's up. To <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, he bought it. I gotta say hi yeah, to him. Yeah, he was yeah, with yeah. Shahidi and them because I don't know what the hell they have they got going on because those guys are, you know, they did. Oh yeah, yeah. I, cards. Yeah, I saw I saw Shahidi uh, at a Super Bowl. Yeah. But yeah, what they're doing is incredible. I'm a big supporter of uh, of no. the, the Full Send project for sure. Yeah. I I went. I already bought like. I definitely, oh, I just bought 15 more just recently. I saw that. Yeah. You aped like crazy. Yeah. I went, I, I mean, that's like with certain projects, I like the one thing I learned is never buy one. So for me, it's like, if I'm going to invest, I need to buy more than one. I already made that mistake with the, with the crypto punk. I bought a crypto punk for 50 ETH and this is July of last year. And then I put it up for, for bid, just like 300 ETH. Yeah. And then it's sold in 21 days. Now you're out. Which is great. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's a million dollars, you know. So um, I was like, oh my god, I didn't. I didn't yeah, but now you got no crypto punk. Yeah. So then I just bought two more. So I, <laughs> so I like with all that profit, I just went and bought more NFTs because I I'm a, such a believer in the space, and I also believe that it's like for me, I don't really care so much about the flip. I care about what it's going to mean when we really start rolling out what Web three is, yep. what the metaverse will look like what Roblox 3.0 yeah. is, yep. all these things. I think that like there's so much application that's going to be used uh, with NFTs that we haven't even begun to touch. Scratch service. Yeah. Just even the new uh, play to earn stuff popping up. Like, I don't know if you got into Wolf Game or, or yeah, Creeps I got Wolf or any of that shit. And creeps, yeah. um, what, was your, what were your big, because I also have seen you 
on kind of the other side of some projects as well. Like he kind of infamously got into Oni on one, whatever you want to call it. We, I, I got in with you. Mm -hmm. I, I bought one Oni for 300 and like, I don't know what the val value is like dropped, diminished yeah. a lot. Yeah. 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 I, I, my, I got mine for like six thirty, <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's dropped. But, yeah. But you know, I, I think about like this, like Oni is like an OG project to me. Mm -hmm. So even though it's dropped, still believer that the yeah project I, will, I like, don't know, you know why i don't i don't feel like a, it's a loss yet like yes yeah, exactly the, the, technically the, it's, the project's <laughs> volume has decreased but like i just don't care i i, I look at like you i don't know, know. You, you have future projects that, that are really popular like azuki's uh yeah. really popular it's huge right uh now. and and zipsy and all these projects that are have like an anime kind of theme Oni was like to me the og anime and the yeah. coolest one i had the i got into the one of the guys with the cheeseburger Right. Dropped like 160 K on it. And I noticed that it was like, I started to notice the floor was like kind of slipping a little. And I got a little worried and I got back out at what I got in for. And then a few days later, it kind of fell nah, out. I, just, a little I bit. just, I just still don't think it's cooked, man. Like this, this is the long game. Yeah. And like, who knows? Maybe the anime NFTs are going to take a turn or yeah. uh, uh, take a, a skyrocket. Eventually. Well, I mean, there's like a lot of projects, especially during that period of time, like world of women, uh, like dead fellas. There's a lot of projects that, that they're, they're rising now, mm. but it takes a while. Sometimes. Yeah. It's yes. some of these take time. Like my project, I dropped February of last year. Um, dream catcher. I mean that, that dr the floor did drop after like everyone bought. Cause I actually, it did really well. It was like the, the kind of surge. I did we did 4.3 million on that project on, and it surged up and then it just dropped. Yeah. Like all NFTs dropped and, it just stayed at this very low floor for 10 months until we announced Aoki verse. Once we like whispered that an Aoki verse was coming, the floor rose like, yep. like a, a lot from like 0.2 to, you know, two ETH. So it's, it all the, it's all the roadmap at the end of the day. It's, yeah. it's, it's hitting the right, you know, parts of the roadmap because I think that's just a natural cyclical motion of an NFT project. You get this initial burst of energy when the project first releases. And then of course it's going to, go back to some sort of most times it goes back to some sort of uh, uh baseline until there's news that's why was, what, for me whenever i invest and whenever i look into projects i always look at the founders mm. i think you know whatever you're doing i'm gonna be in in on because i trust you i know logan paul you're a visionary you you think ahead you care about your community you've already had proof of concept mm. you've already built that with maverick you've already built that with everything you've done so like since you've already done it like the, of course i'm going to follow what you, whatever you. you do it doesn't Thank matter you. what you do it's the same way i look at other businesses i i invest in restaurants with this guy he's just like hey we're going to do this i'm like i'm in you don't even need to tell me i agree it's actually a macro takeaway every business that i get into now I, first of it obviously has to make sense it's a business but the founder is is you're my partner now you're the person i'm believing in you're the person i'm getting behind who are you what the fuck are you made of yeah. And sometimes I believe these people more than I believe myself. And that's why I continue to do what I do. Bro, the CEO the, of this company them. who doesn't call himself a CEO, he just calls himself an owner because he wants to like make it all equal. Yeah. <laughs> is a dog. He's our secret weapon. You know, like this guy's on his shit. And he, he inspires me every day to just continue pushing and making this the, the biggest, best thing ever. Which, by the way, I, I haven't tried this yet. So. I, he opened it. He had it splashing uh, about, into his mouth. To. He was so excited. And I said, Steve, could you please just wait and try it on the show so we can get your reaction? So okay, here we go. My first, my first sip of Prime. I've been seeing it online everywhere. I've been excited. I saw that, saw that, um, that monkey stole your Prime. Can't believe it. Can't I was like... It. I need, I need to try this prime now. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. It's in like, demand. It's the a monkey like spurred a lot of attention. That's why, that's why they're called prime. Right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Bottoms up. Wow. You know, grape is like one of my favorite flavors too. This is like, it's, it's a good this grape. is really good. It's a no. good grape, dude. Cold grape is my personal favorite. Cold grape for those of you listening at home. Make your prime grape. I uh, no, I'm a fan. Thanks, bro. It's really good. Thanks. It's also really, good for really good. You. Really good. Very good for you. That's the secret as well. Like two grams of sugar in that. Twenty five wow. calories. Yeah. I'm surprised by that. Me too. Try that. How, how you had to do the the lab, the lab, all the, the scientists <laughs> cooking up. I like believe all the some stuff. sort of alchemy took place. But yeah. I'm, I'm glad you like it. But yes, the point is this. Believe and do research in your founders. Yeah. Your founders. It's always about the people, not 
the business. I, yeah. I always believe in the people first. Like, just like you're saying, it's like, uh, we talk about John Shahidi, full send. They have an incredible community and they do a lot for the community. So I, of course I, I, I support them. Takashi Murakami, Clonex. How I, mean, I I'm a, I'm a Murakami fanboy. Yeah. I know him personally as a friend of mine. I'm a collector. Mm. So I went in on Clonex. How, how many, dude, I missed that one. And it was probably my biggest miss because Banks had told me uh, this is locked, guaranteed. And the vials, I think they minted at three, three yeah. ETH, yeah, yeah, right. something like that. And I, I didn't get any. And God, within a, a day of it going live, I was like, I fucked up real bad. What did you, how many did you end up buying? I don't know. Matt, how many do I have? Matt. Oh, he, yeah, he, that's not enough. Did you get anything? Did you get any of the crazy ones? I got one. I spent like on on the mint. I I, I got wait, after the mint. I bought one for twenty ETH, so it was a rare. I need to follow up on what that rare is. The blindfolded dude. Blindfolded Murakami, my, yeah. my buddy got my buddy minted the uh, the split face, the Murakami, the actual Murakami. Oh so, my god! Ended up selling it for uh, I think moved it for a hundred ETH. Thinking that he had this massive come up at like what what is that like three hundred fifty thousand or whatever it is yeah. right, and the next day somebody had listed it for like 300, 400 ETH. Wow, that's insane. That you guys, project. You guys can crazy. see the, You guys can see this art right here. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. But like that's Virgil Abloh, rest in peace. Murakami collaboration. Insane. There's only two of these flower powers. <laughs> this is to me ghost status, and obviously Murakami Doraemon. Sick. Yeah. So cool, man. I think uh, I think there's going to be so many cool advancements in the space, and uh, it's awesome to see you leading the helm. Thank you. For real, bro. Also, I want to come to another show soon. And we got to do a collaboration, too. Whenever you drop oh yours, we Oh, my God, we, should, we some, should. Like Aoki Verse and whatever your project's called. I, ha I, collab. I, have, uh, I have some ideas. I have some ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you. Uh, but we do have to go. We have to uh, catch Absinthe tonight, the, the show. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's definitely it's one of the best fun. shows on the show. That's what we're sure. hearing. All right, cool. I don't know what it is yet. No one can really I tell me exactly what it is. They're like, it's a comedy show, but you got to get made fun of and don't sit in the first row. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I told <laughs> like, That's just all what Mike told you. <laughs> no, I, I, I believe that. It's super funny. <laughs> he said it it's, just like that. But like <laughs> super talented. Like the, the people, like like the actual. George got the hookup. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, I've already gone twice. They're it's so oh, good. It's incredible. So they invited me to go watch it and I just got into stand up. So live performance to me, now I see it differently. Yeah. Because I'm like, fuck, these people have to practice this and hope. Right. And I, the, the craziest part is this guy better not fuck up for everybody else that's doing yeah. this uh, shit. Yeah. Right. And there's yeah. acrobatic stuff. Yeah. There's all this stuff. So when I was watching, I was like, these are probably the greatest performers that were like gonna see and they're just on vegas and nobody well they're really also right here like the room is really small it's intimate it's like this that's why uh, yeah. i said in the front row you get shit on you they people are you see do you see what i'm saying I just yeah yeah, yeah. Bro, bro, look, wait, how wait, see, look how he described wait it wait you see the 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 two roller skating uh it's the brother and sister duo that's the craziest that is the that craziest, is the craziest one hey the man craziest don't you'll blow ever it. see oh dude like sick she's like hanging like upside down steve been here and she's just like flying. Steve, nah, this is nah, what you, you nah, were blowing nah, it, bro. It's not like a spoiler were, alert. Who cares? Oh, he painted it. What are you gonna tell him the cares? color of her dress? Nuts. Dude, you, Steve, you're, go you're ahead, tell him the color of her dress. Like, like yeah. you, I want that. I want to be yeah. like that. And, and, <laughs> and like the roller skates, if no matter how close it is, they might be like, like right in front of you. Steve, I am never telling you a secret <laughs> a day of my life. <laughs> Steve, thanks for coming on Impulsive, bro. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. This of, is great. Of course, thanks, guys. guys. Go thanks, to his yeah. shows, buy his NFTs, follow him on Instagram, all the things. Thank you for listening to this episode of Impulsive. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.